she's literally getting with her current boyfriend's dad. Yeah, she just said yes, daddy. I would have left the boyfriend like on page 10. <laughs> the boyfriend sucks titties. I fucking knew it. They kissed. <laughs> Hi, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a 24 hour reading vlog reading Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Yes, I specifically bought this book just to do this vlog because look, I read Penelope Douglas back in 2019 and I read Punk 57 and I hated it. I did not enjoy it. I gave it like a three out of five stars. It, it's the entire reason why I thought I hated bully romances because I didn't like that book. I thought I even like dark romances because I read that book and I was like, hmm. I don't really like this. And you know what, it, it screwed me over because now there's like my favourite genres. Anyway, Birthday Girl, it's an age gap romance where a girl gets with her ex-boyfriend's dad. Or like, does she actually get with the boyfriend's dad while she's with the boyfriend? I don't know. All I know is that this book has been super popular for years. Everyone like always talks about it. Whenever it's someone's birthday, Everyone's always like, it's my birthday, birthday girl. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I hope that I love this book so that I'm able to do that for my birthday and be like, <laughs> birthday. But I could also potentially hate this. this, is, this is, I don't know if maybe, maybe I just don't like Penelope Douglas's writing. Who knows? I, I don't know. Do you know? So we're going to give this a shot. I grabbed some blue tabs. I'm also wearing a blue top to kind of go with everything. It's also a shitty AF day here in New York. It's like 12 degrees. It is pissing rain outside it's been pouring all day I actually just got back from a polycon two hours ago so i've literally been at a polycon for the last like four days straight no sleep only human being interactions and yet here i am to film this vlog so be appreciative i've also been meaning to film this vlog for like four weeks now and it's the one that kept getting pushed back so i'm determined to do this it's four o'clock it's four o'clock this is 400 pages Let's do this. Wish me luck. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I'll hate it. Let's see if you guys have taste or don't have taste. So it's called Birthday Girl because it starts out on her birthday. She's 19, just finished work at the bar. Her boyfriend is not picking up. So she goes to the movie theaters to go eat Krispy Kreme donuts alone and watch a movie. But lo and behold, what happens? She ends up sitting next to a nice and attractive man who ends up being her boyfriend's dad, but she doesn't know that at the time. What happens? The two of them have a nice 90 minute movie date together, but not like really a date. And then she goes to go leave to find her boyfriend and her boyfriend ends up being in jail. And what ends up happening? The guy, the dad is right there and he gets a call from the boyfriend asking picked up from jail and they realize who each other is. And they're like, oh shit, what? And then the second chapter starts and they end up moving in with the dad because they lost their apartment because the boyfriend was a dumb bitch, basically. So, uh. Yeah, not ex-boyfriend's dad. She's literally getting with her current boyfriend's dad. Not ex, current boyfriend's dad. Oh my god. What? Also, her boyfriend, like, mmm, broski. I can already feel the toxic emotional relationship going on here. It's like bleeding out. This man, this man hates onions, but she makes dinner for them all with onions in the burgers. And she goes, will you please try some? And he goes, Okay, I will for you. And then tries them and loves them. <sighs> oh, oh, and then he goes, and then he goes, don't call me Mr. Lawson. Call me Pike. <laughs> I'm on page 100. Not only has a boyfriend literally only been present for like mm, 20 pages. Um, I would have left the boyfriend like on page 10. He sucks. The dad's so much better. I can't even begin to describe it. Yeah, she just said yes, daddy, and it just occurred to me that um, this might have the daddy kink in it, and I, I, I don't, I don't like the daddy kink. It is literally, it has not stopped pouring all day, and I feel like this video is going to be so dark because of that. I'm um, probably going to move over and turn on my ring light later and switch up the angles, but uh, for now, just a little update. I'm like a third of the way through, done some pretty solid tabbing, if I do say so myself. Uh, once again, I hate the boyfriend. I literally, I could, I could give negative, negative shits about this boyfriend. Do you want to know why? Because he is 
a dick and useless and pointless and just sucks titties, bro. Slight trigger warning though in this, Jordan, our main character, her, she was physically abused by her old high school boyfriend, okay? Nothing happens like on the page, but it is mentioned, so I don't know if it's gonna be like a thing that comes up later on or something, but just so you do know. Okay, to recap what has really happened recently, number one, again, her boyfriend is a dick. She literally is working, gets off a 10 hour shift at the bar, calls her boyfriend to come pick her up, broski doesn't answer. You know what happens? Ah, uh, car rocks up, boyfriend's car, girl goes to boyfriend's car, boyfriend not in said car. No, it is actually her ex abusive boyfriend in le car instead, because it turns out that le boyfriend got le plastered and sent the ex abusive boyfriend instead to go pick her up. <coughs> <laughs> no! So what does she do? Runs back inside the bar and sleeps on the dirty pool table all night. Her boyfriend is a little piece of shit. But then you know what happens? The dad, the dad gets like there's a whole like misunderstanding, some shit happens. Anyway, the dad makes it up to her from the misunderstanding by doing what you ask? Building her a garden. He builds her a garden because she's a landscaping major in college and wants to do landscaping. So he built her a garden that she gets to garden for the summer. And then you know what else he does? He bought her a cake. He bought her a cake because they met obviously on her birthday when she was, you know, had no one to celebrate with and was just having Krispy Kreme donuts. He bought her an actual three tiered pink cake and kept it in the fridge in secret because he wanted her to be able to finally blow up birthday candles. <laughs> He's so nice. And the boyfriend sucks titties. Oh, oh, this it's like, it's honestly, it's no contest. And you know what? Not even any cheating at all either, you guys. Cause look, let me think. We are this far through, nothing's happened between them. No shenanigans, no nothing. They've been pretty PG about it all. Just some harmless banter that maybe borders on flirting, but nothing that e anyone could even get upset at. The only thing you can get upset up is this is a shitty boyfriend. So um, that's my current thought process. And you know what I will say. I'm enjoying this a lot better than I did Punk 57 because you know what Penelope Douglas is writing like it's not like it's bad writing or anything which I now for sure do know it's just that I didn't like the setting of Punk 57 although maybe if I reread it now I might enjoy it but again that's that's also set in high school at least she's 19 in college taking summer classes you know um wow this is a really floppy book uh anyway I'm um, having a lot of fun actually with this and it's actually a really quick read too because let's see it's currently it's almost it's 6 30 started this at around about 4 30 so 165 pages in I'm doing pretty well reading wise so okay gonna keep reading for a little bit longer and then I'm gonna have dinner and at that point I'll probably change up just uh the wow it is literally coming down so hard it's not even funny um the angle of this because this is not working anymore my dudes all right. Oh, I'm still a little, can you actually see the sparkles? There was like an event last night, the last night of a Polycon. It's like a gods and monsters event. And so um, I had glitter on my body and it kind of came off, but kind of did not. So anyway. Okay. Oh, also he called her birthday girl. <laughs> so cute. Okay. All right. So I just read a sexy scene that I've actually never read before. This is a, this is a bit of a brand new one. She, she, hmm. I might need to prop you guys up, actually. Let's try this instead. Okay. She just used his loofah to get herself off. In the shower. I have not read that before. That was a new thing. She didn't mean to use his loofah, then panicked afterwards when she realised it was not her loofah and threw the loofah into the trash can. It has since been five chapters and for some reason he has still not realised that his loofah is missing. Anyway, just thought I would report on that. And that's also the first like actual like kind of sex scene we've gotten, which was probably like around the, the halfway mark, so. Yeah. I 
fucking knew it. I knew it. I knew that Cole, I knew that Cole, her boyfriend, was a douche nozzle. This brewski, this brewski has been cheating on her since the beginning of the book. Did I see this coming? Well, quite honestly, I really wasn't sure. To be, to, to, I'm not gonna lie, I really wasn't sure if he actually was gonna cheat on her, or like how they were to break up. But um, yeah, no, dude, she has been cheating on her the entire time. This this makes complete sense. I am not surprised. But it does suck. It does suck, and it hurt for her, and I feel so bad for her. So I feel so bad because like she, every single other person like in her life has basically just like neglected her or left her or used her she's never had anyone in her life who was like just there for her and pike is that pike is there for her he wants to protect her he wants to do good things for her and like it's just so crazy because you're reading this and you can just like you can see you can clearly see that like he He's so good to her. He's so good for her. And he, like, you can tell already he's, like, obviously, like, he's definitely, this is definitely, like, a he fell first situation. A hundred percent. A hundred percent he's fallen for her first. Like, he just does all these amazing and wonderful things. And they bond over all these wonderful things together. I don't know what this means, though, because if the boyfriend's cheating, how does she stay in the house with the dad? Because, like, <laughs> weird situations, but... Oh, man. I'm actually really enjoying this. Maybe I didn't need to check the rest of Penelope Douglas's books. What? They kissed! <laughs> they finally kissed. It's, we're a little over halfway, uh, almost two thirds through the book, and they finally kissed. And it was such a good scene. The entire scene building up to them kissing. Because there's like a flood that happens, so they have the construction site to like, you know, put sandbags down and shit. Anyway, they're all muddy, so they're out to the house like hosing each other off. And clothes start to come off as they're hosing off the mud. And it gets all sensual and sexual. And then they kiss. And then it starts going further from there. And, and, then, and, and then the son comes home. So he ruined it all. He ruined it all. But... I'm so excited to see this is gonna go. So she is officially, she's staying with him while the boyfriend's like, with another boy. Now he's an ex-boyfriend, now it is an ex-boyfriend's dad. Um, but she's still staying with the dad. The ex-boyfriend's like moved in with the girl that he was cheating with. So, hoo, 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 hoo. We shall see where this is gonna go now because now things have started, things have instigated. I'm so intrigued. I have no idea. Oh, I'm so excited for things to get a little bit sexy now. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading. <laughs> oh ho ho, he just told her ex-abusive, the ex-abusive boyfriend, that if he stands foot on the property once again, he'll put him in a hole under some wet cement and make him a part of the foundation of the next house he builds. That's delicious. They just banged, they just bowed chicka wow wow, and it was attractive AF. Them banging, they had some hot banging. Oh, that was some delicious bow chicka wowing that we had over in this house. But now that they've done the do, I have a feeling that things are gonna go downhill from here. Did I say they were gonna go downhill? Because they 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 really went downhill so quickly. That just that descended straight into a fiery pit of Oh no, my son now knows, everyone now knows, and, and everything's gone awful. Yep. Okay, so a little uh, a recap of where we're at right now. Basically, everything comes to light. He just doesn't grow the balls, basically, to kind of say, hey, she's mine. And she's like, hey, I know now that I know what I'm worth, and I want you to know that I know what I'm worth, so treat me like that. But he's still so afraid, you know, obviously of his son knowing and like losing his connection to his son. Regardless, everything kind of gets known. And what ends up happening is she ends up like leaving and like just running away. Not like running away because like she's like, you know what, I know what I'm worth. I need some time to just kind of like be on my own and kind of figure out my own shit. She leaves and his son enlists in the military and yeets the fuck off without any like 
mention as well. So Cole's gone as well. So Jordan and Cole are gone. And Pike's just alone. <sighs> this poor man had everything and then has nothing. <sighs> it's actually not a bad third act breakup to be quite honest with you. I'm really curious to see how it's going to go because we just had a um, two month time jump which I kind of like. I kind of, I feel like third act breakups can go one of two ways but I actually really like the third act breakups that have a time jump in them because sometimes I feel like it's needed because it kind of shows that the characters really go through a period of figuring out what they want and kind of learning for themselves and kind of reflecting on the relationship. So, yeah, I don't know. All right, I'm Dunsies. I finished the book. Um, there was like two epilogues, which I was not expecting. The first epilogue is her getting proposed to and the second epilogue is like when they have their like kid and she's pregnant with like their second baby like nine years down the line, which, you know, is cool. I really enjoyed this. Let me uh, put my camera back up and I'll talk to you guys about it. All right, so it's like one in the morning and it is Sunday, so I actually do have work in like seven hours. <laughs> Why do I do this? Um, almost, almost finished my second lot of tabs. There's only like a couple left on here. So I actually did tab it a fair amount. What I really liked about this, to be quite honest, is kind of, well, A, it's slow burn. Nothing really starts to get going until, like, this part in the book. Like, you've got, like, this much left, like, probably two-thirds in. And I thought it was a really nice progression because, you know, they never cheat while she does, while she is in the relationship. So that's, like, not something that happens. And, you know, which I do read sometimes in age gap romances or different things like that. Like, I feel like cheating for some reason is quite common. Um, but... I think the main thing for me is just how much A, he cared for her and all like the little things that he did for her and how much you could tell that he loved her and worshipped her even though he was afraid to realise that. But what I also really appreciate about this was kind of the whole messaging around it about learning that you, learning your worth and learning that just because shitty things do happen with you doesn't mean you have to let it define yourself. And that it doesn't mean that you can't change and that you can't grow from that and that you can't, you know, want more from yourself and that you can't not, you know, you know, I just, I think there's a really nice message in here about how Jordan grows from the beginning of the book from being a massive pushover to her kind of taking the bull by the horns, taking her life by, you know, in full force, which I really did appreciate. The his ex, Cole's mum, um, Lindsay, is a bitch. For the entire fucking book. That woman has no redeeming qualities. Cole. Cole. Surprisingly enough. Does redeem himself. Don't hate him as much anymore. From when I started the book. He, he kind of redeems himself towards the very end. And the sex scenes are pretty, pretty freaking good. Oh my god. There is this one scene. Where she FaceTimes him from her room. And she locks the door so he can't get in. And she does like a whole little strip tease and gets herself off on FaceTime for him. And he's like, can't get into the room. It's so good. That was such a good scene. Oh my God. Also, if you are someone who really loves 80s music and 80s films and just like 80s themed things in general, definitely pick this up because Jordan is obsessed with the 80s. Um, so you could find some really fun Easter eggs and stuff in it. Wow, why is the book kind of like wonky? But... Yeah, this was actually super fun. I totally get what the hype is, and it does make me think that maybe I would like the rest of Penelope Douglas's books. Now, do I think I would like Credence? Still probably not, because that book sounds literally terrifying. I'll never forget when that came out and I watched Chandler's vlog for it. I was like, this sounds like a shit show. But at the same time, I now read a lot of books that are kind of like shit shows, so... Who knows? But yeah, this is a really fun vlog to film. I really like filming these because... It's really easy for me to just kind of set aside time to read a book in a day and I feel like lately that's just been the easiest thing for me. Obviously, you know, starting a brand new week in my life vlog tomorrow, which is going to be <laughs> such a good one, you guys. <laughs> this, this upcoming week, which is this week now that you're seeing it. Actually, you guys are seeing this. This is going live on Friday. So, hey, happy, happy Cinco de Mayo today, guys. Um, I have a wild day today going on that you guys are going to be so excited to see in my week of my life vlog my dating friend life this week <laughs> there's so much tea dropping <laughs> uh, 
Oh, the drama of it all. I'm living for it. Anyway. So, please let me know down below what, like, another really popular book is that you think would be really fun for me to read. I don't really know what I would do next. I don't really have... I mean, obviously I'm going to do the next Zodiac Academy book because, duh. But, um, popular book-wise, I don't know. So let me know down in the comments what you think would be a fun thing to do. I'm definitely going to take some highlights and notes of this. going to keep this book. I enjoyed it. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more of me, please go to my channel. And don't forget to check me out over on TikTok and Instagram. I post a lot of my stories. And on TikTok, I do a bunch of different date get ready with me's. I also do manga videos on there a lot more. And I do, you know, a bunch of uh, other different smutty book stuff. And yeah, until next time. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.